The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita, as it is, sixth chapter, text number 25 through 29, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded in February of 1969 in Los Angeles. Gradually, step by step, with full conviction, one should become situated in trance by means of intelligence. And thus the mind should be fixed on the self alone and should think of nothing else. Yeah. <clears throat> the self, the mind should be fixed in self. We are self and Krishna is also self. So, just like if you fix up your eyes on the sun, then you can see the sun and yourself also. Uh, sometimes in dense darkness, we cannot see ourselves also, that we have experienced. So, I cannot see my body in dense darkness. Although body is with me, I am the body or I am whatever I am, I cannot see myself, that you have got experience. So if you are in the sunshine, sunlight, then you see the sun as well as yourself. Is it not? Therefore, to see the Self means, first of all, see the Supreme Self. The Supreme Self is Krishna. And the Vedas, it is said, Kathopanishad, Nitta Nityanam Chetana Chetana Nam. The Supreme Self uh, is the chief eternal of all eternals. He is the chief living being of all living beings. Uh, so this Krishna consciousness movement means to fix that in self. To s- the same example, if you fix that your mind in Krishna, then you can uh, fix up your mind in everything. The same example again, if you take care of your stomach, then you take care of all the bodily limbs. Uh, If your stomach is supplied nice, nutritious food, the stomach is clear of all disturbances, then you keep good health. So, if you pour water in the root of the tree, then you take care of all the branches, leaves, flowers, Twigs, everything, automatically. So if you take care of Krishna, then you do the best service to all others, automatically. These boys, they are going to keep them party. Because they are Krishna conscious, it is not that they are sitting idly in this temple. They are going outside, preaching this philosophy so that others may take advantage of it. So a Krishna conscious person cannot sit idly. He thinks that such a nice philosophy of life, why it should not be distributed? That is his mission. A yogi 
may be satisfied with his own elevation. He is sitting in a secluded place, practicing yoga, elevating himself to transcendental life. That is his personal concern. But a devotee is not satisfied simply elevating his self, his personal. Hmm. We offer our respect to the Vaishnavas. Vāñcha kalpatar bhascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patitānāṁ pāvane bhya vaishnavi bhya namana Vaishnav is he, devotee is he, who is very compassionate to this conditioned soul. Kripa sindhu bhayevacha. Kripa means mercy. And Sindhu means ocean. A devotee is ocean of mercy. He wants to distribute the mercy. Just like Lord Jesus Christ, he was God conscious, Krishna conscious, but he was not satisfied in himself. If he would have continued his God consciousness alone, he would not have met a crucifixion. But no, he wants to take care of others also. The others should be God conscious. Others should be Krishna conscious. <coughs> he was forbidden by the king not to do that. So at the risk of his life, he did it. That is the nature of devotee. Therefore, the preacher devotee is the most dearest devotee of law. That is stated in the Bhagavad. They are going outside, they are preaching, they are meeting opposing elements. Ah, sometimes they are defeated, sometimes disappointed. Sometimes able to convince. There are different kinds of people. So, not that every devotee is very well equipped. There are three classes of devotees also. But that endeavor that I shall go and preach Krishna consciousness is the best service to the Lord. Because they are trying uh, in opposition to elevate people to the highest standard of self-realization. So one who has seen, one who is in trance of self-realization, he cannot see it idly. He must come out. He, just like Ramanujacharya, he declared the mantra, Publicly, his spiritual master said that this mantra, uh, just like uh, that Maharshi came in your country, he wanted to give some private mantra. If that mantra has any power, why it should be private? Uh, if at all the mantra has any fine artist to be publicly declared so that everyone can take advantage of that mantra. That is real. It is cheating. You see. So here is no cheating process. We say that this Maha Mantra can save you, we are distributing publicly. No confidence. Free, without any charge. But people are so fools, they are not prepared to take this. They will hanker after that mantra, after mouse. Pay thirty-five dollars and take some private money. You see? So people want to be cheated. And here Hare Krishna mantra 
These people are preaching without any charge, declaring on the street, park everywhere, come on, take it. No, this is not good. This is Maya. This is Talilusha. This is spell of Maya. And if you charge something, you will bluff, if you cheat, or people will follow. Satcha bole to mare latha jhuta jagad bhulaya. Dhanna kali jhur duk lade haspal. This is a Hindu, Hindi verse. By one devotee, that this kali jhur is so, uh, I mean, abominable. That if you speak true, then people will come with some rod to beat you. But if you cheat them, bluff them, ah, they will be there. They will like it. If I say I'm God, ah, people will say, oh, he is is God. They want to inquire. The house have become God. What is the symptom of God? Have you got all these symptoms? And nobody inquires. So, these things happen unless one is not fixed up in the self, unless one does not understand what is real self, unless one does not understand what is super self. So, Yoga means to understand this uh, self-realizing process. That is yoga. Wrong. Verse 26. From whatever and wherever the mind wanders, due to its flickering and unsteady nature, one must certainly withdraw it and bring it back under the control of the self. This is the process. Uh. This is yoga system. Ah, suppose you are trying to concentrate your mind on Krishna, and your mind is diverted, going somewhere in some cinema house. So you should do it, or oh, not there. Please, yes. Yeah. Ah, this is practice of yoga. Not to allow the mind to go away from Krishna. If you can practice this simply, don't allow your mind to go away from Krishna. And because we cannot fix our mind uh, sitting in one place in Krishna, that requires very high training to sit down in a place and all is fixed up in Krishna, the mind, that is not very easy job. One who is not practiced to it, if he simply imitates, then he will be confused. We have to engage ourselves always in Krishna consciousness. Everything we do must be adopted in Krishna. Our usual activities should be so molded that it has to do everything for Krishna. Then your mind will be fixed up in Krishna. Uh, artificially, when you are not advanced, if you try to fix up our mind in Krishna, that yoga practice as it is recommended, yeah, that you have to sit down in this way, straight, you have to uh, concentrate your eyes, sight on the tip of the nose in a secluded, separate place. But where are these chances? At the present moment, where is the chance of all these facilities? Therefore, this is the only method that you chant loudly and hear. Hare Krishna, if your mind is in other things, 
it will be forced to concentrate on the sound vibration and Krishna. You haven't got to uh, uh, withdraw your mind from others, automatically you will withdraw. Because the sound is there. Just like the motor car sound is going on, automatically our attention is diverted. Similarly, if we chant Krishna, so automatically my mind will be fixed up. Otherwise, I am accustomed uh, to fix up my mind in so many things. So yoga practice means to withdraw the mind and again fix up in Krishna. So this vibration of chanting automatically helps us in that yoga practice. Right. Good boy. The nature of the mind is flickering and unsteady, but a self-realized yogi has to control the mind. The mind should not control him. Yes, that is the yoga success. At the present moment, the mind is controlling me, Godas. Mind is dictating me that, uh, please, why not see that beautiful, uh, nice girl uh, I want? Why not? drink that nice liquor, yes. Why not smoke this nice cigarette, yes. Why not go to the restaurant, nice. Why not do this, huh? So many things mind is dictated. And we are falling. So this present stage is, I am controlled by the mind. The material uh, life means one is controlled by the mind or by the senses. Mind is the uh, center of all senses. So to become controlled by the mind means to be controlled by the senses. Senses are subordinate assistants to the master mind. Uh, my master mind dictates, oh, go and see that, oh, my eye sees. Therefore my eyes, the sense eye, is under the direction of the mind. My legs go, therefore my sense organ, the leg, is under the direction of the mind. So to become under the direction of the mind means to become under the direction of the senses. See, if you can control the mind, then you will not be under the control of the senses. So one who is under the control of the senses, he is Godas. Go means senses, and Das means servant. And one who is master of the senses, he is Go Sami. Sami means master, and Go means sense. You have seen the Goswami title. The Goswami title means one who is the master of the sense. One who is not the servant of the sense. So long one is servant of the senses, he cannot be uh, called a Goswami or Swami. Swami or Goswami is the same thing. Means one who is the master of the sense. So unless one is not master of the senses, uh, he is uh, accepting this title of Swami and Goswami, he is cheating. One must be master of the senses. That is defined by Rupa Goswami. Goswami, Rupa Goswami. They were ministers. When they were ministers, they were not Goswami. But when they become disciples of Lord Chaitanya, Sanatana Goswami, Dupa Goswami, and was trained by him, they became Goswami. So Goswami is not a hereditary title. It is a qualification under the direction of spiritual master. 
one who attains perfection in controlling the senses, he is called Swami or Goswami. So one has to become Swami, a Goswami. Then he can become spiritual master. Without being Swami or master of the senses, to become a spiritual master is bogus. That is also defined by Rupa Goswami. He says, Vāca vīgam, krodha vīgam, manasa vīgam, jīvhā vīgam, udara vīgam, upasya vīgam, ītāna vīgān, visaita dhīra, prithivīng sa sishyāt. He says, there are six impetus pushing Vedam. Pushing Vedam, you can understand that why you are called by nature. You have to go to the toilet room. You cannot check. You have to answer. That is called Vedam. Pushing. So, there are six Vedam pushing. What is that? Vāsa Vedam. Begam, the pushing of talking, unnecessarily talking, uh, that is called pushing of the talks. Krodha Vegam, uh, there is sometimes pushing of the anger. If I am very much angry, I cannot check myself. Uh, I do something which I ought not to do. Sometimes in anger, kills his own man. This is called Vedam, pushing. So, pushing of the talking, pushing of the anger, and similarly pushing of the mind. A mind detached. Ah, you must go at once. There. Immediately. The, the pushing of the talking, pushing of the mind, pushing of the anger, ah, then jīvā-vegam, ah, vegam means ah, tongue. Ah, I want to taste that nice thing, ah, some sweet balls or something else which I like very much. The oh. so one has to control this. One has to control his talking uh, unnecessary. One has to control his mind, dictation of mind. Uh, the yoga practice only on the mind. But our Krishna conscious practice has, except mind, there are so many other things. There's an anger, tongue, uh, then juhavegam. Uh, then udara vegam, from tongue, come little down. Uh, udara means belly. The belly is already filled up. Still, I want to feel it more. Uh, that is called vegam, uh, pushing of the belly. And when there is so much pushing of the tongue and pushing of the belly, the next underneath the genital, uh, there is force of the genital. Then I, I require some sex. Uh, if I eat more, if I uh, use my tongue unnecessarily, if I if allow my mind to do anything and everything, then I cannot check my genital also. There is a sex urge which I cannot check. In this way, there are so many pushings. Rupa Goswami says, one who has control over all this pushing machine, he can become spiritual master. Not that spiritual master is manufactured. One has to learn this.
how to check the pushing of these things. Etan vedan ya vishayeta dhira, one who can control over these pushing and remains dhira, steady, Prithivin Sashishya, he can make disciples all over the world. Open. Yes. So, everything depends on training. That is yoga system. Yoga means, the whole yoga system means training. Ah, our senses, our mind, our feet, there are so many things. Right? Then we I fixed up in itself. Uh, do you think that simply by 15 minutes meditation we realize and do all nonsense all the day? No. It requires training. Uh, you are going to solve the problems of life and you want to do it very cheap? No. Then you will be cheated. You have to pay for it. If you want the nicest thing, then you have to pay for it. But by the grace of Lord Chaitanya, the payment has been made very easy. John Hare Krishna. Everything becomes very easy. All this controlling system, perfection of yoga system, becomes very easy. That is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Yaha haite sarva siddhi haive tama. Lord Chaitanya has blessed that if you follow this principle of chanting, then you get all the perfection of self-realization. That is a fact. So for this age, when people have so much Fallen. No other process will be successful. This process is the only process. It is very easy and sublime and effective and practical and one can realize oneself. Pratakham avavavam dharmam. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said that you can practically experience in other system, you do not practically experience how far you are making progress. But this system, if you follow uh, for a few days, you realize, yes, I am making progress. Just like if you eat, you understand that your hunger is satisfied. Similarly, actually, if you follow this principle of Krishna consciousness movement, you will see yourself that you are advancing in the matter of self realization. Yeah. One who controls the mind, and therefore the senses as well, is called Goswami, Swami. And one who is controlled by the mind is called Buddhasa, or the servant of the senses. A Goswami knows the standard of sense happiness. In transcendental sense happiness, the senses are engaged in the service of Rishikesha, the supreme owner of the senses, Krishna. Serving Krishna with purified senses is called Krishna consciousness. That is the way of bringing the senses under full control. What is more, that is the highest perfection of yoga practice. Yeah. Verse 27. The yogi whose mind is fixed on me verily attains the highest happiness. By virtue of his identity with Brahman, he is liberated. His mind is peaceful, his passions are quieted, and he is freed from sin. 28. Steady in the self, being free from all material contamination, the yogi achieves the highest perfectional stage of happiness in touch with the Supreme. So here is the perfection, the yogi whose mind is fixed on me. Me means Krishna. Krishna is speaking. If I am speaking, give me a glass of water. 
it does not mean that the water should be supplied to somebody else. Similarly, the Bhagavad Gita is being spoken by Lord Krishna and he says, me. Me means Krishna. This is clear understanding. But uh, there are many commentators, they deviate from Krishna. I do not know why. That is a uh, nefarious motive. No. Me means Krishna. So, Krishna conscious person is always in Juga Trams. Wow. Verse 29. A true yogi observes me in all beings and also sees every being in me. Indeed, the self-realized man sees me everywhere. Yes. Now, a true yogi observes me in all beings. How you can see? They interpret that uh, all beings uh, are Krishna. So therefore there is no use of worshipping Krishna separately. They take therefore to the humanitarian activities. They say this is better. Why Krishna shall be worshipped? Krishna says that one should see in every being Krishna. So let us tell that they do not know the technique. That requires training and as bona fide spiritual master. This, a true yogi observes me in all beings. A true yogi devotee, just like these devotees are going to preach Krishna consciousness outside. Why? They see Krishna in all beings. How? Because they see that all beings are part and parcel of Krishna. They are under uh, forgetfulness of Krishna. So let us uh, awake them to Krishna consciousness. Uh, a devotee sees others who is not in Krishna consciousness. Just like uh, sometimes uh, uh, some missionary activities are there to uh, to give education to the uneducated community. Why? Because they see they are human beings. They should be educated. They should know the value of life. That is their sympathy. Here also the same thing, that everyone should know that he is part and parcel of Krishna. Forgetting this consciousness he is covered. That is to see Krishna in everything. Not that everything has become Krishna. Don't see like that, then you will be mistaken. Every being is just like if I see somebody that this boy is the son of such and such gentleman, that means I see such and such gentleman in this boy. Is it clear? If I see every living being is son of God or Krishna, then that means I see God in everything. Is there any difficulty to understand? Is, it, is this an association or is this a vision? No, this is a fact. It is not an association or vision, this is a fact. When you see a cat, when you see a dog, you see in Krishna in him. Why? You know that here is a cat, living being. He, by his deeds, 
past deed, we have got this body, cat, forgetfulness. So, let me help this cat, give it some Krishna prasadam, so that in some day he will come to Krishna consciousness. This is to see in him Krishna. Not that, oh, here is Krishna, let me embrace this cat. This is nonsense. Oh, here is a tiger. Oh, here is Krishna. Come on. Please eat me. This is that state. He should take sympathy with every living being that he is part and parcel of Krishna. Vanchakalpatur bhascha kripasindu bhaivas. Not that he shall embrace him. Come on, Krishna. So, the true yogi observes me in all beings. This is the seeing. Uh, why you are uh, welcoming these children? Because he is part and parcel of Krishna. You are giving them chance to, as much as possible, to take part in the kirtan, to taste the prasadam. That child who comes, imitates like this, ah, don't think that it is going in vain. Ah, something done in Krishna consciousness is knowing or not, not knowing, it will have its effect. These children who are bowing down or trying to vibrate Krishna, or class, or these, these things are being accumulated in bank account of Krishna consciousness. Just like if the child catches this fire, it will act. Ah, it will not excuse the child that, oh, he is child, he does not know. The fire will act. Similarly, if Krishna is the Supreme Spirit, a child who may take part in it, Krishna will act. He may know it or do not know. It doesn't matter. Because Krishna is there. So it is so nice. Therefore, every living being should be given chance. These boys are inviting outsiders, come on, this love feast. What is the idea? The idea is let them come, take little prasadam, and it will act someday in Krishna consciousness. It will act. So that is their propaganda. They are seeing everyone. Krishna, they are seeing Krishna in everyone, in that way. Not that everyone is Krishna. Don't make this mistake. Uh, Krishna is all pervading. Why in, in this human being? He is there in the atomas. Anantara sang paramanu chayantara sam. You'll find in the Brahma Sangha. Paramanu means atom. So he is there within atomas. Why not every living being? Uh, you should have that knowledge. So, the true yogi observes me in all beings and also sees every being in me. How? In me. Because everything what you see that is Krishna, you are sitting on this floor, so you are sitting on Krishna. You are sitting on this carpet. You are sitting on Krishna. You should know it. How this carpet is Krishna? Because carpet, carpet is made of Krishna's energy. There are different kinds of parasa shakti vigudhaivasriyate. The Supreme Lord has various energies. Out of those various energies that Three divisions are primary, 
material energy, spiritual energy and marginal energy. We living entities, we are marginal energy. The whole material world is material energy. And there is spiritual energy, the spiritual world, and we are marginal. So we are sitting either in the material energy, marginal means this or that. You can become spiritual or you become material. No thought, alternative. Either you become materialistic or become spiritual. So, so long we are in the material world, we are sitting on the material and therefore we are sitting in Krishna. Because energy is not separated from Krishna. Just like this light, this flame, there is heat and there is illumination, the two energies, the heat is not separated from the fire and the illumination is not separated from the fire. Therefore, in one sense, the heat is also fire, the illumination is also fire. Similarly, this material energy is also Krishna. So, we are thinking that we are sitting on this floor, but actually we are sitting in Krishna. This is Silaja. and also sees everything, every being in me. Indeed, the self-realized man sees me everywhere. That is seeing everywhere. To see every being, everything in relationship with Krishna, that means you see Krishna everywhere. As it is taught in the Bhagavad Gita, Rasoham Mavsukonte. On the test of water. Why water is done? By all living entities. The animals, the birds, the bees, the man, human being, everyone drinks water. Therefore, water is needed so much. And Krishna has talked water so much. You see, water is needed so much. For agriculture, for washing, for drinking. And so, if one does not get a glass of water in due time, he dies. That experience, one was got in the war field. How much valuable is water they can understand? In fighting, when they become thirsty and there is no water, they die. So, why water is so valuable? Because there is nice taste. Oh, you are so much thirsty, you drink one sip of water, oh, thank God. So Krishna says, that taste I am. That life-giving taste of water, I am, Krishna. So if you have learned this philosophy, whenever you drink water, you see Krishna. And when do you not drink water? This is Krishna consciousness. Raso hamma I am the light of the sun and the moon. So either in the night or in the daytime, you have to see either sunlight or moonlight. So how can you forget Krishna? Either you drink water, or see the sunlight, or see the moonlight, or hear some sound, sabdaham ke. Ah. Ah. There are so many things we have read it in the fourth chapter. How Krishna is all perfect. So one has to see Krishna in that way. Then you get perfection of yoga. Here it is stated. A true yogi observes me in all beings and also sees everything in me. Indeed, the self-realized man sees me everywhere. 